Hello guys, so I am back to YouTube uh, after almost nine months. Uh, I am back and uh, today I decided to come back with a different format. I will be playing World of Tanks, I will be playing tanks, but I will not be commenting on the gameplay. I have prepared a story. Uh, basically what I would like to do from my YouTube channel uh, I understood that I am not a type of person who is going to do commentaries and analyze uh, the games. I'm just going to play a game, probably not going to show my OP games uh, or I don't even know, um, very good gameplay. But uh, I decided to dig into history. What does it mean? It means that... I pick a person, an event, a battle, um, a story from First World War, Second World War, or other wars. Uh, it can. I'm not going to go in ancient uh, wars unless you will request request that. But um, I think. Uh, First and Second World Wars uh, would be a great topic to talk about while playing this game. And uh, first uh, person who I am going to talk about uh, is uh, actually not even a tanker. Uh, he uh, is a pilot. So maybe the topic uh, while playing tanks is a um, little bit off. But this person is pretty known. So, it's first time as I do it since uh, he was famous in Germany. Uh, I'm going to play German tanks, uh, we'll see how it will go. Because I will be talking uh, about him and telling the story and playing at the same time. So, maybe I have to do recordings of the game and uh, speak over it, I don't even know. But let's try it. So. First of all, there are some names and places and um, yeah, basically names which I have a hard time pronouncing, so I think I will write them on the video uh, while I will be editing and bear in mind that these videos will take me longer to edit and I do prepare, they prepared all, all day because the sources which I'm using are basically books or um museum uh, uh, sites on internet i'm not using third party internet sites and so on so hopefully that will be um, um better right i'm not saying that i'm speaking everything from my own knowledge i learned about this person now okay so let's get into it first of all this person is known as red baron and uh, his full name is uh, Baron Manfred von Richthofen. Rich I don't even know Germans, please help me uh, how to pronounce. So, so he was born on May 2nd uh, in 1892. Uh, and he was born into a fluent family. He was from a quite a good family in Prussia. Um, which is now uh, known as Poland, so in that territory, right? So, as he was from a good family... Oh no. As he was from a good family, he actually enjoyed... He actually enjoyed his good life while he was young. Uh, he was hunting, he was doing sports... Basically what uh, kids in affluent families do, right? This is very dangerous, this guy in here. Uh, but later on he was... Um, he went to military. Uh, you know, it was not as he wanted it himself, because he wa went to military at the age of 11. So obviously when he woke up he didn't think, Oh, I want to be... I don't know, a soldier, you know? Uh, even though young kids have um, dreams, right? It was uh, a wish of his father and he, even um, Manfred, uh, he wrote in his letter or diary that uh, 
I will uh, cite it. I was not overly fond of becoming a cadet, but um, it was my father's wish. So basically he had to do as his father told him to. So he went to be a cadet in military. And uh, yeah, he was 11. And later after he was a cadet for around eight years, no, yeah, eight years, he uh, got promoted to an officer, which is not a very big promotion, but yeah, uh, he went to a regiment uh, of the Prussian army, so in one of the regiments of Prussian army. Uh, and uh, during those times he actually felt the personal side of the war because his cousin was killed in the war and uh, he started it plant basically it planted a seed inside him for him to want to participate in war more but bear in mind the regiment where he was staying in it was let's say more of a peaceful side because uh, it was uh, he was serving on the border um, on german border with uh, russian occupied poland so it was not a lot going on in there and he was not happy about that and he actually took actions um, for it he wrote to one of his gen generals and um, I will cite again the what he wrote because it's one of his famous uh, phrases uh, so dear excellency I did not go to war to gather cheese and eggs but rather for another purpose so basically uh, since he was not in a very active regiment uh, he was given a lot of uh, other jobs uh, which were not uh, involving uh, you know violence and war and uh, defending the country and so on so he was really not very happy about that and he wrote this in the letter uh, so the generals were not very happy of the way he approached uh, them and uh, the way he asked them because it was, you know, he showed some attitude and uh, he, sh he was pretty sarcastic, right? And um, when you talk to a higher rank person, you usually uh, obey, you know, the rules and obey the way people should be talked to, right? But uh, he... Um, after some years he actually achieved what he wanted and he went and he moved uh, he joined the uh, Flieger Truppe uh, I don't know if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly once again but basically it's uh, in English it means flying service so he was uh, getting training there how to become a pilot he was uh, flying um, Flying. Well, not him himself, but he was training to fly planes, and um, uh, I'll put a picture of him in front of Albatross plane, where he uh, got training in, and uh, when little time passed, uh, he was uh, posted to Field Flieger, up to long 69, which is, uh, yeah, I'm getting wrecked. Which is a, another, how to say, uh, he, he went to serve in Eastern Front. Uh, and um, as he w wrote himself, uh, I wanted to get right out of there, for I was afraid that I would be too late to take part in the war. So you can see that all of his letters, um, he was living with the idea that he will participate in the war. And... Um, he didn't want to back down, you know, like he wanted to, to get closer and closer to the front. E50 actually killed the art, I need to go back. I'm sorry, a little bit off topic. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so 
sorry, my brain lagged. So basically, after he moved there, he uh, got paired with another pilot. I got paired with another pilot and uh, this pilot was another ambitious guy so he was pretty lucky and pretty happy about that oh my god my two loaders are out <laughs> yeah that's that yeah so uh, with another ambitious pilot so he had a good time right uh, bear in mind the story is uh, building up of how he became very popular right uh, so Manfred had qualified from, uh, for the Observer's Badge and this badge actually allowed him to be, um, uh, allowed him to be in charge of an airplane but only if he flew with, with an enlisted pilot, right? Uh, most of his um, early flights always used to be with another pilot in the plane so he never used to do solo uh, flying and uh, actually there is a story that uh, when he went on his first solo flight he was so o overwhelmed with the emotions that he is doing it on his own uh, that the reason is not very clear but that he lost uh, the control of the plane and actually crashed but uh, it it wasn't a big crash so to say so he was all right and a couple of days later he could go back uh, in the air you know so it wasn't a big deal but it was a big deal for him personally because he was going step and step closer to wh where he wanted to go uh, so when he completed uh, many trainings and passed a lot of tests, he received pilot's badge and, uh, um, and received a quality MIG certificate. Uh, he now could perform um, uh, solo flights fully on his own and this is where it started, his story started. Uh, he uh, became a combative pilot and what does it mean combative pilot earlier he used to fly two seaters uh, two seat uh, uh, plane and now he was flying one seat plane and he was in charge of everything and on top of that he could uh, deal with the enemy uh, so yeah uh, he flew a Fokker plane i will write it down how it's uh, spelled uh, and uh, with those type of planes a lot of his idols or other famous uh, German pilots uh, achieved many victories so it was very how to say encouraging for him to do good uh, because he is actually carrying the title the same as his idols and uh, bear in mind in war uh, many soldiers, pilots, uh, some nurses uh, were idolized because uh, they had to raise the spirit of the warriors, right? Uh, and uh, um, pilots were not an exception and he was actually uh, having a couple of the idols himself and with the help of the press many soldiers uh, had their spirits raised and they were again you know um, passionate about uh, fighting for the country or their front uh, so yeah he got an another crash but he didn't receive uh, the big uh, injuries so uh, this is basically how the story started for him as a combat pilot oh i thought i'll hit that uh, so yeah so he got his first victory and then started to, to race as a very famous pilot, uh, a combat pilot. Uh, and uh, the image of Red Baron um, was created when he actually painted his plane in red. And even the cross, which uh, was a um, um, national uh, uh, sign, right? Uh, of uh, his country even it had like a red wash so all of his plane was red and uh, British uh, started uh, naming him the Red Baron so he became uh, 
he became uh, uh, a very famous figure not only because of what he does and and in the way of how he looks as well in his play um, he actually became a very beloved propaganda figure and symbol in Germany and he uh, uh, was featured in many many uh, articles and uh, in, in the newspapers uh, and uh, yeah he was talked about a lot I actually need to move closer Let's go through the field. Uh, but why is he so popular? What made him so popular? So basically, uh, he became a commander of a flying circus, a group called Flying Circus. And this group was filled with top pilots in Germany, like top German pilots. And he was a commander. So imagine uh, working with top pilots and on top of that commanding to them which is a big deal and uh, of course he was not bad himself if he was given such title right so another thing is uh, these pilots this um, flying circus they were taking part if the in uh, the western front and they were uh, fighting in key battles so they were very very important uh, group of pilots oh that's rude so they were important and um, he uh, became the top fighter pilot uh, in world war one with 80 confirmed uh, victories or kills uh, and that's why British called him Red Baron, right? Because Western Front and he was killing a lot. Uh, Manfred was... Uh, sh how he died, he was shot down and killed in uh, April 21st in 1918. So he was only 25 years old. Uh, actually, he encountered many close to death uh, situations in his career. He was uh, taking over the skies for all, all, only two years and um, even though he was a pilot he was a combative pilot only for two years he is um, the only he is the only pilot who managed to receive or to make such uh, amount of victories in first world war among all, all the pilots so that's why he became uh, very important uh, for Germans. So yeah, uh, I'll finish the story. So he was taking over the skies for two years and uh, uh, other historians talk that uh, if they count uh, unconfirmed uh, victories, it would be over 100, but there are only official eight, uh, officially registered 80 victories of him. Uh, so we are going by this number. Another important th fact, uh, that he actually witnessed not only his he didn't witness but he found out not only about his cousin's death but he witnessed the death of his idol and uh, i think that uh, these experiences were uh, pushing him forward to be this aggressive combative pilot and the way he died he was chasing uh, British plane with his group and he went down uh, he went lower and when he was chasing him he went very low and actually he got shot by machine guns and the bullet hit him directly he managed to land the plane but uh, he uh, uh, he didn't survive the the shot so this is the way he died and yeah, 
He encouraged many pilots and many soldiers. He was an idol in, in Germany and he's still known to this day as a Red Baron and uh, a First World War hero uh, as he is called right now. So this is why I have chosen to talk about him. I know it's not tanks but uh, it's a short story and uh, I was covering it from the book. The book is filled with information, with his letters, with his diary, with his letters to mother and so on, but uh, I did not include a lot of it. I just wanted to include like the major parts. And yeah, I learned uh, about Red Baron myself. Prior to that, I have never heard of him. I was not into First World War because as usual, Second World War, ooh, 1258. As usually, Second World War is uh, more famous to talk about, but uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry if I was blabbing a little bit. It's pretty uh, difficult to play a game and uh, talk straight facts. I have prepared uh, and was reading a lot. Uh, even though I remember certain facts, but I just wanted to make sure. So tell me if you enjoyed, uh, let me know in the comments and because I really was enjoying preparing for this and uh, in future I will only advance and I will only improve uh, my storytelling skills. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and see you next time.